After a year hiatus and a lifetime in development, we finally get a look at the new Audi Q7. And let's not mince words, it was worth the wait. There are a ton of developments to cover here, but the biggest bit of improvement is, you guessed it, weight savings. Every manufacturer is bragging about weight loss lately, so it's no surprise that the new Q7 shows up with a claimed 700 pound drop. That's a serious bit of ballast, and that means that the curb weight now lands at just below 5,000 pounds with the V6. Now the figure I've always heard the racers quote is that every six pounds is equal to one horsepower, and that doesn't even count the benefits in braking and handling and in saving wear on components like suspension and tires. But before we get into all that, let's talk styling. Everything is new here, but take a look at the overall profile. This is now more wagon than crossover, and it's a direction that I hope more manufacturers follow. By the numbers, it's about the same height as the outgoing version, but it looks lower thanks to changes in the roof and belt line and the windshield angle here, plus subtle design changes in the trim around the windows and the fenders. Speaking of the fenders, these are supposed to be Quattro Sedan inspired. Regardless, I think they look great, especially when filled with these 21 inch wheels. And normally I prefer smaller wheels, but these just look the business. But most of the design work, both visually and technically, is happening up front. Everything is tighter up here, and with this new single frame hexagonal grille and more angular lights, it's almost like the Q7 is furrowing its brow at you. In fact, this entire front end is the perfect example of how subtle changes can affect your perception of the entire car, and the back got a similar treatment as well. Okay, let's talk weight savings. 700 pounds is a lot, so let's break down how they achieved it. Those fenders, the hood, the doors, and the tailgate, that's all aluminum, and Audi claims that alone is worth more than 200 pounds. The front control arms have been switched out for multiple links front and back, and the entire suspension is built out of high strength steel and aluminum, another 220 pounds gone. The rest was achieved by a transmission redesign, more high strength steel and aluminum used in the new MLB Eco chassis, and believe it or not, cleaning up the electrical harness. Wiring weighs a lot. Now, if you think the outside is gorgeous, check out this interior. This isn't exactly a revolution in design for Audi, but as far as I'm concerned, that's a good thing. You've got the traditional MMI interface here on an 8.3 inch touchscreen that rises and lowers from the dash. And that's controllable by a rotary knob, buttons, and a touchpad here with the handwriting recognition. As clean and elegant as it all looks, it is a little intimidating at first with the multiple inputs. You're never really sure which controls what at what time. I mean, you get used to it, but if you think that's bad, that's nothing compared to this virtual cockpit. This thing is cool. Cool and dangerous because there's just a ton to get distracted by. There's so much information here and it's all configurable, it's just really, really easy to get distracted while driving down the road. Now, full Google Earth integration means you're never gonna get lost, but it may also mean crashing from not actually looking where you're going. There's just so much detail here, and it's all configurable. I really need to take a deeper dive into it in my full review, so make sure to check that out after the video so you can find out about options like night vision and full autonomous technology that this actually isn't equipped with. For now, I'm just really glad that there's a heads up display for a more concise view of the pertinent information because apparently my attention span has just been absolutely destroyed by social media and short form entertainment. This prestige trim was fitted with the optional 23 speaker, $5,000 three dimensional virtual Bang & Olufsen sound system. And if you're looking to blow out your eardrums, this is a great way to do it. But otherwise, the 19 speaker Bose surround sound system is more than adequate. Beyond that, while the base Q7 can be had for 49 grand, properly optioned, you can hit $100,000 in this thing. So this seems like a great way to just knock five grand off the bill. Regardless, no matter what trim you go for, every Q7 is fitted with this just gorgeous panoramic sunroof. And 
I think that's my favorite feature of the car. It's stunning. So how does it drive? Really well. There are two new engines this year, a two liter turbo four that outperforms the outgoing V6 and a supercharged six cylinder offering 333 horsepower and 325 pound feet of torque. Both are mated to an eight speed transmission and with the standard rear biased all wheel drive, you'll still get an EPA estimated 19 city and 25 highway for 21 combined. In about 500 miles of mixed driving over a week, I've averaged 20 flat, but I think it's important to note that the four cylinder is only rated at one better in the city and equal on the highway. So saving money is the only real reason to go for the smaller engine. Now with all those weight savings and those impressive power numbers, the Q7 can hit 60 in just 5.9 seconds. Although it doesn't really feel that quick. I guess 700 pounds down or not, a 5,000 pound curb weight is still a 5,000 pound curb weight. But where you really do feel those weight savings is in the corners. Here with the optional adaptive suspension, you can choose between the normal Audi drive select modes of comfort, auto, dynamic, all those, or you can even raise the ground clearance from 8.1 inches to 9.6. That's pretty cool. The all-wheel drive system defaults to a 40-60 rear split, but it can send up to 70% of the torque to the front wheels and 85 to the rear, although there is no low-range transfer case. Now on the road, this is one of the most composed and quietest mid-size crossovers I've ever driven, and it's where this Audi really shines, especially with the optional four-wheel steering. Now that helps the Q7 achieve a 20-foot turning radius and contributes to it feeling like a much smaller vehicle on the road. Though more impressive is the fact that it can come to a stop from 60 miles an hour in just 112 feet. That is simply astounding. Cargo capacity is below average compared to most rivals at almost 15 cubic feet in the trunk and 72 with the seats folded, but interior space is not paltry at all, regardless of where you're sitting. I can even sit in the third row, although getting back there isn't exactly easy. It's towing where this really shines, with a maximum capacity of 7,700 pounds when properly equipped. And even the four cylinder can manage 4,400 pounds. There's so much to cover with this car, and that's because Audi is putting everything behind it. The old Q7 was wildly popular, and they need this one to be just as much of a success. More than that, this is the debut for the MLB Eco platform, and that's gonna be the foundation for the new versions of the A4, the A5, the A8, the Volkswagen Touareg, the Porsche Cayenne, and the new Bentley SUV. And that's an impressive group of stablemates. If the Q7 is any indication, Volkswagen Group may just be able to pull out of the current troubles they're in. Hey, thanks for watching. Like I said, there are a lot more details to cover with this new Q7, so click the link in the description. You can head over to cargurus.com and read my full review. And for reviews of some of the Q7's competitors, just subscribe to the channel.